Hello everyone, I'm Sophie Kachmanian. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to demonstrate the mandarin color for you. The mandarin color looks like this. Um, as you can see, all three are kind of mandarin color. This one is the wing color, the tuxedo color, which is developed from the same structure. The mandarin color is called military color, narrow color, or Chinese color. Pretty much it's a base, stand, stand up a color that usually measures inch and a quarter or something like that. In order for us to cut any color, actually, we need to understand their structure and how they work. For instance, some colors, as the shirt color also, will be cut like this. Uh, the structure is kind of started on a straight line. These type of colors are called convertible colors, meaning those are colors that could be worn uh, buttoned up or open. Meanwhile, some other colors, like a Peter Pan color, is a non-convertible because the cut, the structure, is circle like the neckline. So the mandarin color belongs to this group of colors, which is like convertible color, and it is structured starting from this straight line as you can see but one thing that we all have to understand is the colors length and a measurement should be matching the back neckline plus the front neckline so when we're done with the collar it actually matches the neckline i'm going to measure the neckline of my bodice foundation you can measure any neckline that you're working with so I take my back foundation and I place my tape right at the neckline and by holding with my nail or you can hold it with a pencil and in small increments I go through the neckline and wherever it stops um, I will put that measurement right next to it so next time I don't have to measure it again. Usually I will keep it on my foundations and then I will take my front neckline, neckline and I would do the same exact thing when I am walking with my tape along the neck, neck, neckline and writing down the measurement right in front, of, uh, in front of it. On this piece of paper I placed a line, straight line, in the middle of my paper which is going to become my center back neckline here. I am going to take the line, crease it, and staple it so when we cut, the paper will not twist. Okay, so here we are. Now, this side, the fold, is going to be my center back, okay? So, here's what we do. As I mentioned before, we're going to start from a straight line. So this is my straight line, which is my neckline. So this is the back of the neck, and that's the neckline. In order for us to see it better, I'm going to show it on the dress form. Okay, so imagine this center back line is my fold on the paper and then the straight line that I placed is going to become my neckline where I'm going to place the back neck measurement plus the front neck measurement. That's how I will come up with that total number that will give me also the other side of the collar. Okay, so first I'm going to place my back neckline measurement on my straight line, which is three and five eighths, measure yours. And we're going to place that measurement from the center back to here. Uh, this is my future notch point, which is going to match with the shoulder seam of my garment. And then I measure my front neckline measurement, which is four and five eighths. And at that point, I am going to construct a straight line. If I place my ruler matching one of the lines with my line on the paper, I will be getting perfect 90 degree in there. So I put that line right there. So this is going to be my center front line. On this line, I'm going to measure 
half an inch up and with my French curve by placing like this the tail of the French curve should go towards the shoulder and I am going to draft a curvy line this is a shallow curve like this so this curvy line is going to go closer to the neck shape in a way then I am going to place my ruler again one more time one of the lines matching with the curvy line not the straight line with the curvy line like this where I am going to make another straight line so when I actually construct this line this becomes my center front line now it is not this point okay so this is my new center front line once I construct those lines now I need to decide how high my collar is going to be let's assume I want inch and a half high collar so now you can see that I put inch and a half line half an inch one inch inch and a half matching with my neckline and I'm going to draft my colors upper edge by moving my ruler according to the curvy line as I mentioned the curvy line is my final line right now so I am measuring from that as you can see I came up with a perfect parallel line to my neckline and um, I am going to place my French curve again one more time to smooth out my line now my collar is pretty much ready if I didn't do anything this will give me pointy shapes at the center front but if I want to make it um, curvy so I take the small curve of my ruler I place it right at this corner and make my curve okay so the color is done so that's my mandarin color all I need to do is to add seam allowances which is going to be a quarter quarter inch usually the seam allowances for colors are quarter inch only so I'm going to measure my quarter inch all around by the way um, at the neckline of our garments we do have quarter inch seam allowance um, also so that's how we can remember the measurement of the seam allowance and I am going to add quarter inch all around take my French curve again and smooth out my curves and I am uh, ready to cut before I cut my color out of the paper I would like to explain something for you can you see every color has two pieces one is called a top color which is the one that we can see from outside and the other one is hiding inside so this is called a top color and this one is called under color you clearly can see since this garment's under color is made out of contrast fabric so i am going to construct my under color also at the same time with this color with the top color so this one is going to be my top color and i'm going to make an under color for it as you can see i cut my color off of the other part of the paper is because i want to make my under color also usually you would say cut your top color trace it on another piece of paper cut them because they are the same but in order for me to make um, a meaningful shortcut which actually will give me a precise under color i can place my two pa papers right on top of the, each other like this folds are precisely matching and i will staple these two pieces to each other like this so they don't move now um you see while i'm cutting my top collar i will be cutting my under collar at the same time which saves time for me and also it gives me a precise pattern for my under collar you 
you see one of them is going to be my top color this is my top color and this is my under color now before I um, actually separate them from each other I would like to mark my neckline notch which will be a common notch between these two pieces and then let's open them uh, well uh, this is a fairly uh, easy color uh, we're done with the construction so we have uh, we have one piece this is going to be my top color and this one is going to be my under color sometimes in production they will cut just the top color and say cut two but we want to learn how uh, uh, these colors are notched for production what they would do is for the top collar they will place one notch at the center front sorry center back and for the under collar at the center back they will go quarter inch away put one notch and another notch i am marking so you can see them clearly most probably we can put one notch at the top because when we're sewing these colors to each other this is a fairly long line they might need a notch right there but companies use different kind of practices. Now, so my notches are placed. Now I am going to put my grain lines on. For colors, they would put the grain lines any way they want to cut these colors. That's why sometimes they would be placing their, their uh, grain line in the, on this direction, or they can put on this direction. Depending from the design of the fabric, or the need of the performance, that particular performance of the color. It can even go 45 degree bias if they wanted to. So let's imagine, um, let's imagine having a plaid fabric or stripes, stripes or dots, as you saw on my color. Depending from the design of the fabric, if we need to shift them, then we're going to shift the grain line accordingly. Choose one of the directions that you need to. Obviously, the same um, grain lines will go on my under color. Let's assume I was thinking to do a contrast fabric as it was on the garment. Then instead of marking in red, I will make, I will mark my pattern in blue. So they will know that there was a fabric change. Usually when there is contrast again, they could do blue markings labeling and stuff okay so my top color is usually fused this should be fused because i want it i want it to be like stiff and present little stiffer and pre presentable compared to my under color so this will conclude my mandarin color construction for you i would like to share this example of mandarin color with you um, which is much narrower, it's kind of three quarter inch high, um, and it's on man's shirt, very popular color. And uh, another reason why I wanted to share this with you is because this garment is made out of stripes, striped fabric, where you can see the body of it is placed on this direction, stripes are, uh, stripes, stripes are running up and down, and on the collar they go on the opposite direction, to create a certain effect for the garment. Okay, I placed my cut on a form so you can actually see how this two-dimensional cut becomes a three-dimensional collar. Now, this is my center front, as you can see. Obviously, my uh, seam allowances are overlapping, but if you stitch the seam allowances, these colors will be kind of kissing each other right at the center front. And then you can see that my notch is going to be matching with the shoulder seam that's where it's going to be stitched and my center back is matching with the center back so we started drafting it from the center back came to the shoulder and then to the center front you can see the same thing is happening on the ready-made garment where again very similar color but kind of like a high collar is connected to the neckline where you have center front shoulder and the center back so you can make even this kind of collar 
out of this pattern if you draft it instead of inch and a half height you do maybe two and a half inches you will come up with this kind of color then so this will conclude my demonstration for you on mandarin color